Hey, Jim. Hi. Um, I've heard a lot of different definitions of what the light body is. Could you explain to us what the light body is? Absolutely. Thanks. So this light body is a concept that for many years, spiritual people walk around in with a, with a concept that says, oh, someday we're going to have the light body. But for the most part, it was a concept, something that's going to happen someday, and it didn't have any personal alignment. One of the reasons is, is it doesn't, it's not, it was conceptual. It wasn't visceral. It wasn't physical. And the reason is all the parts and there's in the pieces of it have to be evolved. It's not something where somebody anoints you and you go poof into a ball of light. So this light body is, starts as, as we play with it in Mastering Alchemy. And the whole purpose of Mastering Alchemy, let me just set that in the context of the question, is Metatron said to me one time, there's a path that has never, ever been walked. And we would like to invite you to walk this as a teacher. He said, this path will allow you to step into your evolution more smoothly, your own ascension. This path will allow you to hold the door open for all of mass consciousness to step into that fifth dimension. And this path will allow you to assist the elementals and the earth to rise back to its fully Christed state as a 12th dimensional being. Would you like to play? <laughs> what do you say? Well, let me think about this. <laughs> I've got lunch and I've got a date. And so... That's the foundation of mastering alchemy. So this process of moving to this establishment of crystallizing the molecular structure of the physical body, starting point, starts from the standpoint of you can't take your baggage with you on this journey. So where I've defined paradox in the fourth dimensional configuration, the ability to start to choose to start to recognize your third dimensional history as simply history, not as baggage, not as I was bad, I did wrong, I'm not okay. You can't be not okay. So you can't take all the baggage that says I'm not okay with you. So in that process, when the fall of consciousness occurred, the mental and emotional body were separated. We treat them as gen generally two bodies in reference, but they are one body. So as you begin to recognize numbers of things, there's many layers to think from. You don't just think from this rational mind. You move into different layers of it. When you understand the layers of thought and you can intentionally put your attention in a chosen layer and then think, because you've got different reasons for different layers, but when you start to play in that fourth, fifth, sixth layer of thought where you can just ponder without engaging, or where you can observe without engaging thinking as words, you start to become conscious of lots of aspects of you and of these higher realms. It's almost like you've been walking, looking down all your life, and for the first time you get to look up. And when you look up, there's much there. So by beginning to choose the creation of a different platform to experience your physicalness in this third, fourth dimensional reality, the externalness of the world around you, which is kind of crumbling around you, and recognizing that's not me, that's theater. I'm okay. In that place, you begin to change the vibrations of your essence. Thoughts are electrical, emotions are magnetic. So here, choose. Anger, rage, resentment, depression, happy, enthusiastic laughter. Which feels better? So you're going to choose this space. But what happens when you choose it? You know that feeling. You begin to, I like me. You begin to be happy. You begin to simply be pleased with yourself. How does that feel? It's much more relaxed. It's less dramatic. It's less pull. The body's much more at ease. So when you can begin to build these platforms of words, simple words, electrical frequencies, words, sound templates, words, all those words are what make you up. So how do you wish to present yourself if the creator invited you to lunch today? Elegant, certain, capable, gracious, commanding of my presence, 
happy. Those aren't words from here. I say to you, have you ever been happy? Oh yeah, I've been happy. It's not a question. It's a feeling. Motions are magnetic. So what if you could, I say to you, do you know what certainty feels like? And many, many people say, oh yeah. But if I said to you, close your eyes, sit back, take a breath, and what does certainty feel like? All of a sudden you see this happen in the body. And there's a, pre it's not a physical experience only, there's a sensation, there's a command, there is an alignment. This is who I am, begins to build. Does that make any sense? So as you begin to build this light body, and you begin to play with words and platforms, and I make this little symbol of a triangle because the triangle is the fundamental geometry of all the geometry. And so you start to build the sense of yourself as feelings. You begin to have different thoughts. But when you play in that aspect of the, the layers of thought, you can pick a word like happy and have no emotion. I'll say to you in a lot of the work we do, be ha be, feel, think happy and then choose a vibration of happy to match that thought. And you instantly go, happy, there it is, because that's your habit. But if I said, now choose happy, and now choose an emotion that is really, really happy, bigger smile happy, you will choose a vibration that's elevated, and you will go, yeah, this is great, happy. That's a skill to be able to choose a thought and apply an emotion in that capacity. Does that make any sense? So as you begin to do that, that mental and emotional body begins to be one. It's at this point where you begin to recognize that the numbers of things, one of the primary things is the reconfiguration of the chakra system to play in this elevated state of unified field of consciousness. This was a gift back in about 2007 from the Creator. It was one of the first times I've ever seen Master Kuthumi really happy. I mean, he's always happy. He's brilliant. But this was a day that exceeded all days. He said, the Creator has given a gift. He said, I didn't think this would happen for many years to come. But reconfiguring the chakra systems into what's called the triads, where you basically use the fourth chakra, the fifth chakra, the thymus center, the sacred heart, differently. You use the sixth chakra, the pineal center, the medulla obligata in the back of the brain, really important, which is dormant, differently. And you use the eighth chakra, the seventh chakra, the eighth chakra, and the soul star. And you begin to create a unified field of consciousness where the consciousness is not compressed. You begin to know yourself. It's in that place that you start to do amazing things. You start to utilize the three chakras in the body differently. You begin to open what's called the eye of Horus, but it's in the brain. And you turn on aspects of the brain. You begin to um, use the eighth, ninth, and tenth chakra very precisely. This is where the universal mind lives. This is where the realms of the lords of light and the archangelic realm live. You begin to know them consciously. You begin to do other aspects of changing the electrical frequencies. You change the neuron messaging in the brain, so you change the fluids and the secretions in the bodies. You elevate the ATP so that the energy network of the body begins to be on all the time at well-being. You begin to do something at, and you get to a point where you start to play with seven layers of the light body. You alter the meridian system, you alter the axitonal lines in the axial spin points that allow you to enter into these realms of consciousness. You build something that's called the Ark of the Covenant. It's not something in the desert that Indiana Jones was looking for. It is a massive electromagnetic doming around the head that allows you to begin to use the energetics of what's called undifferentiated light of the Creator as a creator in the body. In the pineal gland, 
there is a very, there's a capacity to turn the flame on in the pineal gland. It's in that flame that you begin to use the flame of the heart, the living light of the creator, and you bring it into that pineal center and you begin to be the creator God that you came here to be. Still a little G. You start to step into that place, that, that sixth, seventh dimension become very available and you begin to access the eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth at some point. Completely different experiences, nothing that relates to the physicalness of the body. But the key is you are a unique reflection of the creator, reflecting back to the creator creation. And you are part of that collective aspect of all that is simultaneously. So I'll say to you what Metatron said to me. Would you like to play? But see, you will. One way or another, if you can listen to this, it's because you know this. And it's this space that you're all stepping into. Some will take a little longer. Some will take a shorter period of time. But the process, the templates have been laid in place. There are now over 300 people that I am personally aware of that have walked this path with Metatron, the Lords of Light, the Archangelic Realm, Yeshua, Sanat Kimura, Sananda, Maitreya. They are the teachers. They have completed this process. The templates are in place for everyone else on the planet to walk, and everyone will in this next period of time. So that's what the light body is, and I probably forgot a lot of pieces or at least left them out. So, good question.